Okay, volume six. It's in my book set of Bible stories. We're in volume six by author, Bible story by author S. Maxwell. Okay, we are at part two, story 12, Great Joy in Jerusalem. Okay, when the last stone had been laid and the last gate hung in place, Nehemiah laid plans for the dedication of the wall. Invitations were sent to people all in all the nearby villages, in particular the Levites and the sons of the singer, sons of the singers were asked to come. Nehemiah wanted everybody who could sing or play an instrument to be there. For it was going to be a great a day of great rejoicing. And what a day it was. Everybody was there. Men, women, and children from far and near pouring into the into the city. With pride and joy they gazed up at the newly built wall, gasping in wonder at the fine new gate. Anyone who helped in the building was glad for every hour he had worked and every stone he had lifted. Then the procession, procession began. Priests and Levites walked ahead and purified the people and the gates and the walls. After them went the prince of Judah and the two and two great companies of them that gave thanks. They went up by the stair, stairs of the city of David. And one went to the right and the other to the left on the top of the wall, which, had, which was thronged with sightseers. When all were in their right place, the priests lift, lift their trumpets and blew the triumphant blast, which echoed and re-echoed from the surrounding hills. Then the singers began, and how they sang, O oh, give God thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And I hear, and in my brain, I hear the, the song that's in, that they were singing on, on in the movie, Prince of Egypt. Okay, uh, that's, I hear the beat in my brain. That's just me. And then, let's get back to the story. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Soon everybody was singing. The top of the wall was crowded with singing men singing women, singing children, and so loud did they sing that strangers far down the valley heard the sound and looked up to see the wonderful sight. Uh, and right now it's Sabbath in our time, my time. How happy everybody was that day. For the God made, for God had made then rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoice. So that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even far off. It was about this time after the wall had been finished that Nehemiah called all the people to meet him near the water gate. They came as one man, and soon every inch of space was filled. Everybody was eager to hear him, hear his hero, his hero speak. To their surprise, they saw that a tall wooden pulpit had been built near the gate, and they supposed that Nehemiah planned to talk to them. But it wasn't Nehemiah who spake to them. But Ezra, 
Dear old Ezra, the man who had led thousands of Jews back to Jerusalem several years before. During all the bustle and excitement of the building, the aging scribe had been out of sight, busy no doubt with his books and his temple duties. But now he was back, and everybody was glad to see him. In his head, hand, he held a scroll containing the secret book of the law, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Yeah, we used, we did, we do that sometimes in 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 church. We do it sometimes. Sometimes we don't. Okay. It was not, it was not the whole Bible that he held, of course, for the New Testament and much of the Old Testament was not written at this time. Probably all he had was a volume containing the five books of Moses from Genesis to Deuteronomy. But oh, how precious it was. All written by hand, it was one of the very few copies in existence. Many of the people in the crowd had never heard this book read aloud. Others could not understand it, but the language was different. They had grown up in uh, Medo-Persia, and the Hebrew that Moses used was beyond them. However, whether they understood it or not, they stood respectfully and paid attention, which is what you're supposed to do. On and on the old man read, from the morning, from the morning until midday. Then some of the other priests took over and read the book of the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And it's got a picture, and it's not my camera. It's the way this illustration or painting is. There he is, from morning until noonday. So, about three or four hours, maybe longer, that he was reading. And then other people read. Okay? And, and it's singing. If you've ever heard it, uh, or want to hear it, it sounds like singing. I've heard a little bit sometimes. Or um, bits and pieces I got. But it sounds like singing. I've never really gone to a bar mitzvah, but, it, but I saw a little nuggets and it sounds like singing as the people listened they became very sad gradually it dawned upon them what glorious plan <clears throat> plans god had double had for israel and how terribly disappointed he must have been in them even now after all his mercies they were not giving up to the they were not living up to the high standards he had set for them some began to weep soon all were weeping at this Nehemiah went into the pulpit went into the pulpit and tried to cheer their hearts this was not a day for mourning, he said, for this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's, uh, I remember that song. <clears throat> we had, they had done a great work for God. He was pleased with them. If they lived all right he would continue to bless them just like nehemiah 
already always trying to bring cheer and courage to people. Soon the smiles came back on the sad, gloomy faces. The meeting broke up and the people went on away to eat. Sorrow turned to joy and there was great a very great gladness in Jerusalem. And then it has a picture and of them smiling and praising. Here's the illustration. Okay. And that is the end of part two, story 12. So, of course, break time, time to break, and then we'll go to the next one.